how should a young person invest their money? Because your, your mother clearly was big on dividend stocks, things that pay interest. Is that the best way to go forward now for a young person? Well, there's a difference between day trading and investing. Uh, there's nothing wrong with day trading. And I, and I think there obviously there's over 20 million people doing it right now just on Robinhood alone. So it's been a very successful platform. But that's not the same as investing. Um, it's very, very difficult over a long period of time to beat the index when you're day trading because you have, you, you know, you tend to be concentrated on just a very few names and you're constantly trading them in and out. And I think it's fun in some ways and nothing wrong with it. But I always tell people if you get winnings from day trading, take them and put them in to an index of some kind that you just store away, that you don't risk. You just let it sit there and grow, whether that's 10 or 15 percent, whatever it is. That's investing when you do that. Day trading is a form of gambling, which is really exciting, and there's nothing wrong with it. I, I think it's a wonderful thing that people do it, but it's not going to help you long term because very, very, very few people can beat the indexes over a long period of time day trading. So you're saying if somebody made a lot of money off of the GameStop saga, take some of that money and put it into an index that's going to uh, help you make money for the long term. Exactly. That's the right strategy, and that's the right thing to do for for your retirement. You've got to have that thing just compounding, you know, get any one of the robo apps and, 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 and do it that way. Because a trading platform where you're picking a name and, you know, day trading in and out are, is very, very difficult to grow wealth with. Are you worried at all about the health of the stock market because of all the retail trading going on? We have so many people entering the stock market. Maybe they know what they're doing, maybe they don't. Uh, but a lot of people are, are trading with leverage. I think we have the highest margin trading ever. And a lot of people are coming into the market with very high expectations, hoping to double their money in a very short amount of time. Is the stock market going to crash because of that? Well, the market's always correct. And sometimes as much as 40%. I don't see that anytime soon because we have a very, very buoyant economy and we're about to get you know, $1.9 trillion stimulus package, and now a room of a $3 trillion infrastructure package. That's a tremendous amount of stimulus. So, you know, asset classes like stocks are likely to do well during that period. But there are times when markets do not do well, and you have to live through that. I, it doesn't bother me that, you know, people are actively day trading. I, I have no problem with that. I think that, you know, it's, it's just bringing more people into the educational side of investing. And I'm not sure you know, that we're going to have a crash anytime soon. Nobody knows with certainty. But my point is, these are environments that are very good and very you know, productive for stocks. And so my anticipation is they will tend to trend higher. So what advice would you have for someone who is uh, new into the workforce in their late 20s, early 30s? What should they be doing? Would you follow your mom's advice, your mother's advice of a 20% into the stock market, into an ETF? Or, or what would you recommend? Well, you know, I, I have some basic rules. I always say this, never more than 5% in, in any one stock. So if you look at a portfolio, you never want one stock to represent more than 5% of it. You never want a sector like energy or technology to represent more than 20% of the portfolio and have some allocation of fixed income. I'm currently 70% equities, 30% fixed income because fixed income is very expensive these days. And I anticipate as interest rates go up, it won't do that well. But the point is it provides stability. The whole idea of um, investing is diversification. You really want to be diversified. And so I use exchange traded funds for that. That works for me. People can pick their own stocks if they wish. But you know, there's all kinds of different philosophies. But at the end of the day, um, you know, if you, if, you, you, if you want to build a nest egg, you've got to have the discipline of diversification and, and monitor your portfolio so that no one position gets too big. That's what happens to people that really get blown up. They don't follow any diversification rules and they end up with one or two stocks representing 40, 50, 60% of the net worth. And when they correct, they get killed. Can somebody still follow the model today and become wealthy? I mean, we're, we're in an environment where uh, a lot of people, millennials especially, are, are having a tough time being able to pay their rent. They're having a tough time just being able to get by. How does someone who's now essentially living paycheck to paycheck start putting aside money to invest and become wealthy? Do, do these kind of rules, rules of thumb still apply today? They do because the, the majority of people, and obviously there's, there's exceptions to every rule, but the majority of people spend too much money on crap they don't need. I've noticed that for years. And so I'm very disciplined. You know, I, I don't buy clothes I don't need, I don't wear. 
I, I learned that from my mother. I, my, you know, my, I wear the same. I've got 25 of these suits, 25 of these ties, 25 of these shirts. I do a huge production run. This is my Shark Tank outfit. I also wear it all the time. It's sort of the same. I don't have to choose what I'm going to wear each day. I already know. And it sounds boring, but it really works for me, and I save a ton of money. And so, you know, I'm still saving money when I can. I don't see any reason to waste it. So there's a lot of change in behavior to save money. I can guarantee you, you don't need to buy three coffees a day at $7 a coffee. That's a total <laughs> waste of money. You see that all the time. Yeah. And people go, go out and pay $25 for lunch. How dumb is that? I mean, I don't do that. You know, I just, it offends me. It's bad karma to, to just waste money like that. So I'll bring some lunch with me. I can't stand spending seven bucks for something that costs 18 cents to make. That's so stupid. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people look at America, United States as one of the richest poor countries in the world because, so I'll give you an example. My grandparents uh, from the state of Punjab, they were refugees because the state was severed and they lost their homes. They lost their family. They lost their land. They lost everything. And my grandfather came to his new home running with no shoes on. And so they were raised with the discipline of you don't need a bunch of stuff in order to survive. You, you, you kind of learn to live with very little. And so I was raised with them. And then when I was going to school and I, it just just the basic things like I, I would I would go to lunch with a brown bag and I would make sure they had to take my brown bag home the next day because I would use their brown bag for the whole semester. You know, it's a little things that, you know, we're in such a rich country where we don't realize that maybe we're being wasteful. And I think, you know, is that, so it sounds like that's what you're saying is we're spending a lot of money on things we don't need. We have just so many luxuries, a higher standard of living, which is, which is causing people to live broker. Well, the average salary in America is about $56,000. And so there's no question in my mind, you can cut 10% of your costs. You are wasting money on something. You're buying a third pair of jeans you don't need. You're buying a fifth pair of sneakers you don't need. You're buying some crap you don't need. Everybody buys crap because... Our whole society is designed to get you to spend money from the day you're born, but you don't need to. It's not necessary. In fact, less is more. There's something beautiful about having a minimalist life and having things that you really cherish. And that was also my mother's philosophy. She would save up for a whole year to buy a Chanel jacket and buy nothing else. And I mean, that was her whole thing. I want to own this jacket for the rest of my life. And when she passed away, there was a huge fight amongst the women in the family trying to get her collection of <laughs> Chanel jackets, which she'd only buy one of every two years. But she bought the highest quality items and not a lot of them. That was her philosophy. And I, I think that really works. So now it looks like, you know, someone wants to become wealthy in this day and age. First thing you gotta do is you gotta cut some of the expenses. Second, continue investing your money, just like your mother told you to do, your mother did. And like how you said, the third thing is now, what about in terms of making money? Because you built your wealth as an entrepreneur. And Obviously now things are very different because we're in a very technological age. If you were stripped of everything, all of your money today, your fame, what would you do to build, rebuild your wealth? I would go back to what I know. And you know, that's, I'm a salesman, I'm a marketing person. That's I've been my whole life. Uh, I would go back and find a product or service or a company that required a good salesperson and I would go work. I mean, that's what I'm used to. I mean, I've been working you know, I, I took some time off right after the liquidity event for the learning company, but I went right back to work and never stopped. And today, you know, I have a very, very busy schedule doing a whole wide range of things, but there are things I want to do that I really enjoy doing. Um, but I'm, I'm basically, a, at my core, a marketing and sales person. So that's what I would rely on. I think those are the hardest jobs in the world because salesmen are the only people, and saleswomen too, that start at zero each month and have to build back their business. You always start the next month at zero. And then you have to go sell again and, and you can't even have a company without a great salesperson. You have to sell, sell, sell. That's how it works. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the shorter clip from the longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love. And if you're interested in learning more about how to invest your money in the stock market, our team put together an amazing guide that will walk you through how to invest your money in the stock market. This guide is completely free when you sign up for our daily newsletter. So if you want to read this guide, all you got to do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching. And as always, keep hustling.